Now, um, uh, thank you very much once again, Linda Oferikwafo uh, of the GII. The 2022 Corruption Perception Index, um, you title it, Ghana Fails to Make Progress. Um, and you say that Ghana, for the third consecutive year, scores 43 out of a possible clean score of 100 and ranks 72 out of 180 countries and territories included in the 2022 Corruption Perception Index released um, today. That's the uh, 31st of January, 2023, by the Transparency International. This score, and you put that in bold highlights, reflects a lack of progress in the country's fight against corruption. A lack of progress. How do you stagnate in fighting corruption? It's difficult for me to appreciate. Okay, thank you very much, Samson. And uh, it is possible. And so then, if the CPI is scoring countries on a clean score of 0 to 100, and for three years running, Ghana keeps on getting only 43. And then uh, out of 100, and it's happened in 2020, 2021, and 2022. Then obviously, what other description can we give this kind of performance? So in CPI, we are expecting to go up. We have been 47 before. So we're expecting that gradually, by all the things that we put in place, we should be able to be getting, making some progress. But from what we had and the sources available that were used for Ghana, you could see that there were instances where Ghana scored, made some progress in certain areas, and then those were cancelled. The progress was cancelled by another poor performance in other areas. Okay. And I always say that when it comes to the CPI, we are, they are not speaking to angels. They are speaking to people who do business, experts, think tanks in the country. So they are actually trying to see how the country's public sector it's actually allowing corruption to go on unconcerned or what measures have been put in place to ensure that corruption is being minimized. Samson, the questions they ask in all these data sources, so the CPS, the composite index, it has about 13 data sources. And some of the questions they are asking borders on bribery, diversion of public funds, use of public office for private gain, um, nepotism in the civil service. And they go on further to ask questions like, what, gov what is government's ability to enforce integrity mechanisms for effective prosecution of corrupt cases, and all those things? So then we might score on, for instance, the, the fact that we now have, have an OSP who is showing um, um, commitment and readiness and ability deal with certain kinds of issues. But when it comes to, as to do we, are we still having so much corruption happening? Then the, your auditor You are talking about the OSP that has been working for 17 months without pay. <laughs> yes, the same OSP that's been okay. working <laughs> I know what you are trying to do. I understand. <laughs> okay, so talk about um, the OSP making some efforts and actually getting some results with the min minimal resources at their disposal. Then we talk about, so if you look at the Auditor General's report, for instance, and the recent one, the COVID-19, government expenditure on COVID-19, also showing how much we still have corruption as a problem. The, the, we said COVID was a problem. COVID was the reason why we are where we are. But when we had resources to manage COVID, we even ended up also mismanaging that particular funding. So when they, if they ask the business expert about use of public resources, they will answer, no, we are not doing well. Mm. When they ask about the, is the OSP being effective with the little resources, yes, the OSP is doing well, but then it will come, it will come and cancel each other and we'll then still be staying where we are. That's how can we type the, Ghana. The, mm. the, the people that they speak to um, in this uh, report, do they include the big businesses that are trying to evade tax, trying to cheat the government and because of that, the GRA has been on them. Do they include um, the the guys at the at the computer placement center who are taking twenty thousand cities for parents who are desperate and needing their uh, children to be placed in grade A schools? Those parents are equally corrupt, and they too are corrupt. Do they include these people? So then, talk about the, I said the CPS, the composite index. So the various surveys. 
that have been used at uh, the 13 surveys might have spoken to some of these people. But as I said, if the, even if there's a business expert who doesn't have a child going to SHS here in Ghana, so might not know, they read, they hear, they experience when they do business with the, the Ghana Revenue Authority, when they go to all these tax institutions, they encounter corruption so that they speak about what they actually, uh, their experience in the country. So it is possible some of them might not have heard about the the fraud in the school placement and all that, but some of them might have read about it, but they, I think they'll be talking more about their personal experiences in doing business with the country's public sector mm -hmm. and where they actually encounter corruption, they will talk about it. So uh, what, 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 how bad is our current standing that we have held on, you know, for three years? It is, for me, it is very bad. And especially when we are at a moment where we are talking about lack of resources. So I was just listening to the DDEP conversation that we had before this. And the fact that we need to even manage the little resources that we have. And in account, we say something like, yeah, the enam ni yinam. So you need to resource the SP. Which, um, the, the, the SP's own um, institutional framework has been designed to be able to even help us Re, um, make money, if I can put it that bluntly. So help us to save money, help us to, so that when, when, when you look at the, I think the section 66 or so of the OSP Act, that actually says that when they recover stolen wealth, they are supposed to give a percentage to the consolidated fund. The SP's office takes about 30% or so. Attorney General's office takes about 10%. The 10% will go into whistleblowing uh, persons or institutions that help in the recovery. So then if you have such an institution, you need to resource it to be able to really protect the IMF money that we are going for. Because even the COVID funds, if you have now resourced the SP funds, and you have actually put in place measures to prevent the project from happening, Samsung by now, we should have so much mm. that we cannot work with. But then, so for me, I think that if we are not able to put some measures in place, the situation so, will get... So, so we got to a poor ranking. And since then, we have done practically nothing to improve the fight against corruption by a government that won power on the back of a campaign against corruption. The CDD's uh, Afrobarometer 2019 uh, found that corruption was being normalized in Ghana, normalized in Ghana. It established that a majority of citizens found corruption to be somewhat or a lot worse. You had six in 10 people, that's 61% of Ghanaians, who were afraid to report corruption for fear of being suffering uh, reprisals or some retaliation of the sort. So this is where we are still. Corruption has been normalized, three years. Yeah, so corruption has been normalized, Samson. But as I said, so the effort that is being put in by institutions like the SP is not getting, it's not reflecting on the CPI because corruption is still allowed to continue. And it's so normalized, so you brought in this thing about the school placement system. And I'm happy with the work that the fourth estate did because this is something that we all know about. This is something that at the time that they were moving from the old system where we all belong to, where our parents go to the schools and beg them to give us Achimota or whatever. I went to secondary college. I didn't get anybody to pay for me to go to Achimota. But that doesn't mean I was not good. My school is great and that's made me great. So I like secondary college. Whatever it is. So we're hoping that that system was transforming to a more um, appropriate, a more manageable, that would be able to eradicate the kind of corruption that we saw in those days when the head teachers meet around the table and they keep on pushing the papers around and take money and do their own things. <laughs> so a more dangerous state where even it's only the rich that can actually have access to certain schools. And the painful bit about this school placement thing is when you qualify, when your child has done so well and the name will have to be removed for somebody, a rich parent somewhere, whose child has performed poorly to get the place because their parent can pay, what system are we talking about? So, 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 so whilst, we are talking, whilst we are talking about the grand corruption, what you are talking about now is the petty 
everyday corruption that is people are also normalizing, isn't it? If the yes, parent is ready to go pay and there is someone uh, with the Ministry of Education or Education Service who are ready to sell the grade. It, it is. You see, at TI and at GI, we keep on saying that corruption's negative impacts or negative effects is quite dire, but then it affects the poor more than even the rich. So what is happening is that so somebody somewhere in the village somewhere whose child has performed well, and all that person has is the child's intellect. The person has been given by God's grace as a child who's very good academically, mm -hmm. but cannot get the schools they want because they're rich parents somewhere. And for me, the normalization of corruption, the same Afrobarometer that you made reference to, actually said, as also said that, by that people are losing trust in our institutions and in our government. And if you look at the CPI's theme for this year, we're talking about corruption, conflict, and security. And gradually, as people leave, um, actually lose trust for the state, you know where we are heading towards. So those things are intertwined. And the, 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 if you don't take steps to address the problem of corruption, mm. I'm not going to be a prophetess of doom. But very soon, the things about conflict and security will be something that we cannot manage in this country. And for me, people are, are losing trust in the government that actually came on the back of anti-corruption. For mm. us, the mismanagement, so what we are discussing, I actually was reading Article 36, I think the Directive Principle of State Policy is one. And what role government responsibility the, the Constitution gave to the states to manage our resources to the extent that the people will be happy and all that. Today, yeah. the people are because of it is pure mismanagement, it is pure corruption, and, and it, is, it, it is misappropriation. Mm -hmm. Some of them want to give it nice names and other generous reports. The thing is corruption is corruption, mm -hmm. and mismanagement has gotten us here. So mm -hmm. let us resource the institutions with the power of preventing the corruption from happening, of the, with the power of recovery, stolen wealth, and with the power to investigate and sanction corruption to mm -hmm. do more. And All any right. day, any time, mm -hmm. I would advocate for the OSU. Uh, okay. okay. Please hold, on, please hold on there. Uh, Kofi Bento, uh, Occupy Ghana has been doing some work. Um, it's been doing what it is known to do best, the brain power heavy lifting work. And Occupy Ghana tells us that the Auditor General's report, if you take the Auditor General's report, 2016 to 2020 alone, it reveals the money stolen and misused is about... 48 billion Ghana cities. If you add those of 2021 and 2022, uh, maybe if we add the uh, special audit on the COVID-19, um, and the money that must be recovered from those misuse or stolen, then uh, we should be talking about an amount four times the three billion that we are begging from the IMF to revive the economy. Yes, what's, Samson. What's so, wrong with us? Oh, there's a lot that is wrong with us. And to put what you said in a simple statement, we steal and waste in this country more than twice what we borrow. We steal and waste in this country more than twice what we borrow. There are fewer than 500,000 people leading this country out of 30 million. And those 500,000, and that is the ministries and whatever, they steal and waste more than twice what the 30 million of us borrow to just survive. Okay? And these are the things that sometimes when you consider, if you, if you look at some of the things like you say, Occupy Ghana, Imani, and the work we do, and some of the things that you see, Okay, and we've changed governments. It's not like it's the same set of people. We've changed governments. You know, we've drive this set out, another set comes, and they do the same thing. Mm. So we need to figure out the this, way this government, to do it. this government, this government, while time. campaigning, promised uh, us that it was going to, you know, get us so much money from corruption. Mm. So it was going to block mm. the corruption, places of corruption, and get us a lot of money. Yes. Yeah. Because it is possible. And if you sit outside and you look, you can see where these blockages can happen and how we can save these monies. 
The problem is that when they get in, they don't do it. Many reasons account for that, but this point is very important. Let me make the point. The problem comes from our governance systems and structures, which ultimately goes to the Constitution. And these government governance systems and structures, because they are flawed, manifest themselves in massive corruption, which makes people give up. And then it also manifests in economic problems like what we are having now, leading to DD and all those kinds of things. So look, you can bring people, you can make President Obama the president of Ghana, he will have problems. Mm. So um, two things, yes, our leaders are failing us serially, but the main thing that needs to be done is to now put structures around them, starting from the amendment of the constitution, so that these things that continue to recur, regardless of which government is in place, will at least put a handle on it and maybe redirect it in the right way. But the problem we have now is that our leaders do not live what they promise. They don't care about making sure that we move from what they have complained about to the right place. And you know, when these things happen and continue, continue, that is how you get the pools and all those things because it seems to some people that constitutions don't work. Constitutions work. What we must do is make sure that our leaders at least develop a certain passion to make sure they will make my hesitation is because it is not like the constitution caused the problem. With this same constitution, you can actually get a lot done. So it comes back to the problem of leadership. Now, if we leave the constitution as it is, which is more or less like open, then if you get a bad leader, we'll continue to have corruption. So what we need to do is now move from an open constitution to a tight constitution that does not give them any room at all. Because really, I'm not sure whether it's NDC or MPP or there's going to be a third party using the same constitution and seeing all the things that can happen but still turning around and doing the right things. We've been there, done that. It's been 30 years. We cannot trust our leaders to do the right thing. It's unfortunate, but that's the truth. Mm. Um, Martin, mm -hmm. you, you have often focused on what you say is the one bullet kind of solution mm -hmm. uh, for checking corruption in mm -hmm. public place. Yes. Um, but from what you have observed over the period, the CPI says we have been stagnating. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm asking a question, and I think I know the answer from you. <laughs> because of what you have been doing over the last uh, few months. Yeah, we should. OK, so what do you say? Yeah, so it's a sad spectacle, like you said. And I like the way you played back the president's speech to the BBC. When they asked him, Mr. Uh, uh, Ekufuado, how are you going to fund free SHS? He says, with proceeds from corruption. You see, you've, been, you've played that uh, tape over and over. Yeah, it was, it, it resonated with us because we could all feel corruption under Sweeney's party those days. So we thought Fuadu was coming to do it. It turns out that he was even going to get more corrupt because as we speak today, openly, he was family, actually going to use the announced principle. Yes, we're coming to uh, his He's 18 notable codes. Maybe I'll repeat them here. But now his family is very rich through the data bank commissions from their bonds, the euro bonds and everything. Yes. His family has become very, very rich. So you see how the president is not the right person to fight corruption. And see why citizens keep saying that he just has to resign. Because once his family has become very rich as a result of his coming into office, he lost the fight. The plot was lost from day one. As soon as he put in measures that his family can become rich. You're talking about a president mm -hmm. that a petition that you filed mm -hmm. and complained that he had not acted on for a long time. Thank you. Uh, some, someone filed mm -hmm. and you complained he had not acted for a long time. So you decided to file it to OSP. Excellent. On the back of the OSP's investigations, this president you are accusing yes. dismissed two officers. Yes. Too little, too late. Are you done? Too little, too late. Sam, you are a lawyer. We are all lawyers. Look, this is a petition that from day one, he failed to even acknowledge Dr. Uh, Suleiman and, and Amzoya. He failed to acknowledge even the letter from Dr. Suleiman Alas and Amzoya. He failed to do so. And it's so worrying. The chief of staff, the same. Baumia, the same. They were all copied. So it's as if they were in cahoots to just, you know, deal with this matter. We just step on it. This is a foolish and case. Like Zoya, the, and Amzoya, by the way, was the president's appointee too. Excellent. Yeah. You see? So like, oh, he this, had to leave the place. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They said this is a foolish case. They will not even acknowledge. Look, 
I understand Anam Zoya even tried to see the vice president. The handlers will not let him. So that means that the people even, uh, uh, this is shepherding the vice president, they are a problem because you can, Anam Zoya is alive. You can interview him. The vice president's handlers will not allow him I've to I've spoken see. to him. Excellent. You see that thing? So it just tells us it, it's a nation with corruption rate large. And you see this. Look, Sam, I said it earlier on. The when president when told Manasseh me, did his contract for sale, mm -hmm. and Ejenim Boating Eje was indicted, Thank you. the president removed him immediately. Yes, yes. So that is why I'm baffled that this one is not removing him. And this one, the evidence is even clearer. This one, you see that Anamzo Zoya warned them. As soon as he saw that there was this, uh, this um, forged contract, he wrote to the chief executive. If you read the OSP report, you see them say, look, he wrote to the chief executive, hey, 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 this thing is forged. I didn't sign a contract for 10.4 uh, million. No, the one I signed is 5.7 million. The chief executive, uh, this is Smaila Abdul Rahman, would have none of it. And today he's still in office. Ah, during president. But he's was, being prosecuted. Yeah, no, but he can't stay in that office. Sam, what will happen to the employees who are going to testify in, in the court? They, they'll feel threatened because he still comes into the office. He's still in the office. And the potential witnesses are in the same office. How? That's a hostile environment. So, so, so he's has fighting corruption, but not as much as you expect. Yeah, he, he's not fighting. This case is not fighting. There was nothing he could do. Within his this period, case, we have been to told stifle. about the facts that you cannot contradict. Mm -hmm. That the anti-corruption agencies yes. have received more money within his period than any other regime. Uh, Sam, right now as we speak, I don't agree. Yes, so it may just be figures, but as to impact, no and may be misdirected. Let's do this. You know, as we speak now, lawyers have come together. They are petitioning the president over the non proper funding of the OSP. Because the OSP last report, he said, uh, so Kisie Jabin said, he has not received the establishment budget. So you see a huge edifice there, but it's empty. He doesn't have logistics, etc. So lawyers have come together. They are signing a petition being led by Ja Jose Tete to petition the president, very soon we'll bring it for you to also sign, that he should set up, he should provide money for the OSP, because as we speak now, I don't know why Linda didn't mention it, the OSP has only three investigators. One, two, three. There are some police stations that have more than three investigators. The OSP doesn't have enough prosecutors. So you see that it's even the deputy OSP, uh, senior, the, the lady, uh, she's the one traveling to Tamale to prosecute the case. That tells you that the OSP is grossly underfunded. President Kufado is not interested because the more he funds the OSP, the more they will come after his appointees. Because as we sit now, you know Clara uh, Napagatia, the office of the president, she approved this transaction. She signed. Director of budget also signed. And they, they are lucky. And that tells you that we have to look at the OSP law. Because OSP doesn't do causing financial laws, because it appears that would be the proper offense. So maybe we have to look at how the Attorney General may give that look. In that case, when you find financial loss, please go ahead. I think that will help us. So Clara can't be uh, Napagatia. She can't be celebrating that she's been left. I mean, they, they didn't indict her. No, she approved. So Sam, what I want us and Ghanaians to uh, 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 listen, analyze is it. So the madam, the boss who approved the payment of the money, how can she go scot-free? How does she pick her pen to sign the uh, this, uh, approval documents without doing the necessary check? She must pay a price for that. You can't just sign. So you just walk into the office, anything that's put on your table, you start signing. So on those basis, the president has well, to start I, I, I will have to come back to you later for the question of the So Sam, can we kick in just one question? Uh, okay, the two, uh, our favorite uh, articles. Yes, I'll, I'll come to you then, we'll, we'll get there. But, but, but Sweeney, the, the, for example, last week, when we, did, we had to discuss the Auditor General Special Report on COVID-19, I brought in, you know, uh, a president from somewhere else who said, because you have spent COVID-19 money on travel, get out of my cabinet. And ensure that, you know, many people got arrested, you know, and prosecuted over this matter. Well, this week we also heard that he's also reduced his uh, ministerial portfolio or ministers because of the, you know, situations. And I was reminded that if the auditor does a report, you don't expect the president to come and grandstand and say, auditor has found you, has found you, so you are in trouble. 
Kokwa uh, Juma Menu, you have been found to have done this, so get out. It should allow the processes to work, including Public Accounts Committee. It's not doing those things publicly by the president an indication that he is not fighting corruption. The systems are there. Well, Samson, um, I agree with Kofi that uh, news file time is very short. I would have loved to have this conversation under three themes. Get to the juggler. I mean, the general perspective of, of, of corruption in this country. Then you look at the political perspective. If political party funding, for example, becomes crucial in such a discussion. Then you can now look at the specifics. That is, in terms of parties, regimes, and conduct of people who lead those parties, and how that impact on this fight. But I'll just say that, uh, because of uh, lack of time, that this government, for some of us who believe that it was going to fail, we are even shocked at the outstanding failure. I mean, even for those of us who didn't expect anything from this government. It is proven to be the worst ever in the First Republic. Look, our education sector is messed up, and you cannot rule out corruption in, in, in that mess up. You look at um, unemployment rate. It has ballooned to double digits you know, now. You have youth unemployment over 30%. You look at um, you know, cost of living. Never before have we had to pay so much for very basic uh, 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 things. Infrastructure deficit has increased. And corruption, corruption, they have been stuck at the worst performance of the previous governments. In fact, the previous government's worst performance is where they have been stuck at. 40, pray, yeah. you know, out of 100. And it is not just based on what we perceive. It is what we know the reality is. And in fact, if we were even going to do this measurement, this ranking, based on the reality, we will be worse. So perhaps they are even lucky that this is based on perception. Look, at the time that Ghana was ranked 43, which was considered the worst in 2016, you had a minister of state resigning because there was a buzz branding under her watch. Here we are, you have, as Martin is telling us, the appointee at the presidency, and he, she's not the first one, and it doesn't look like she'll be the last appointee of the presidency. That would be insulated from clear commissions that have aided or have led to corrupt activity. And people think it is grandstanding that we expect from the president. Yes, if the president doesn't have to grandstand to tell us that audit findings against Kwekwa Jiman Menu uh, is so bad that he must step aside, then he should not also be the one telling us that Ajiman Menu is such a hard worker and people just hate him. Yeah. When he does that, he sets the tone for all other institutions that are expected to work under him. That's why our people say that the fish starts rotting from the head. That's it. The gold mining company owned by his regional chairman. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the name? A Akonta Mine. Mm -hmm. Chairman went to me. Mm -hmm. Why should it lie in his mouth to come and tell us when there is evidence and report that that company is engaged in mining in a forest reserve, that it is not mining in a forest reserve. That indictment was actually by the government. By the same government institutions of state that he says we should allow to work and we should look to those areas to see the evidence of his fight. Yet he comes out, he will not grandstand to sack the people and to dismiss people, but he will grandstand in defense of those people. I mean, that is why I'm saying that for those of us who even believe mm. that this government was up to no good and President Akufado and his vice president were not the right people to be given the mandate to rule, we are astonished by their outstanding failure. Let's, let's listen to the Attorney General, Godfrey Dami, on this matter of corruption. Um, and then we'll hear from Bafwa Ajumandria as well. Let's hear them. 
2017, the government has focused on building a system for preventing and detection of corruption. It has undertaken agreeably the boldest initiatives since independence to reform and strengthen Ghana's capacity to tackle corruption, especially in the public sector. I find it highly unreasonable and unfair for so-called high-profile criminal cases involving simple summary offenses of fraud, willfully causing financial loss to the state and money laundering to drag on for years in our courts while similar cases filed against the perceived ordinary member of society are quickly or rapidly concluded most of the time within about six months to one year we have witnessed the failure of the high court to resolve the opening trial the past six years this is simply unacceptable it's not acceptable for such a case to stay at the court for six years when other more complex cases of murder secession and offenses brought on the city of the state are more speedily resolved this development deepen the injustice and inequity in our society the judiciary clearly has to play its part they have to play their part the judges also yes in the eradication of corruption there cannot be a better way of ensuring that corruption does not pay than through the speedy efficient and just adjudication of corruption cases especially the so-called high profile cases involving politicians and other wealthy businessmen uh, school placement and the fact that uh, people are paying twenty thousand to get their case into schools and all <laughs> so corruption is not just the technocrats or the bureaucrats or the so-called political leaders it is endemic in the society that we have created and that creation comes from the system that we have created and how we have created a system that make it possible for people to take advantage, mm. you see. So uh, it, it's a tough issue. And I, at times I'm uncomfortable to Parliament. At times some laws are passed, bills are passed, after parliamentarians have been paid, and I'm saying this publicly, they can't challenge me on that. They take it. <laughs> and then you, you stand and say, you are corrupt, you are corrupt. They are politicians, look. They are, there's so much dishonesty in this country. Right. So we will take a quick break. When we return, we'll talk solutions. Uh, we have talked these solutions in the last three years, and we have remained where we are. Can we hear something different? Or is it just the same things that ought to be done that are not being done? We'll be right back. You're welcome back. This is News File. It's your most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on News File, we put Ghana first. And we have been engaging Kofi Bento, Martin Pebu, Alhassan S. Suhini, and Linda Ofori Kwafo. Uh, shortly, we will be joined by Kwesi Kwating, spokesperson for the Ministry of Education, as we look at how to fix the cracks in the school placement uh, system. So let's talk some solutions here. And um, in the course of this week, uh, there are some people who have been very excited about this development where often Ghana has a case against in the international arbitration circles and we're going to hire lawyers, you know, millions, uh, thousands of dollars, you know. And Koku Aza, Professor Koku Aza has been saying, what's the job of the attorney general? What do they do there that they don't go and do this defense by themselves? And you have a lineup of lawyers from the attorney general's office. No foreign you know, inclusions. The attorney general leads to get a, a succeed in a preliminary objection about the jurisdiction that the Chinese company that was seeking a 55 million um, dollars for Ghana cancelling its contracts with us on the traffic. So that's uh, refreshing. Uh, well, but it's been, they've been successful there, but the case has not been determined on it, Mary, okay. so we don't know where else it mm -hmm. will go. Mm -hmm. um, I want to start with you, Martin, before okay. I go to Linda okay. and then come back to the studio again. Okay. How do we ensure that at the next CPI, mm -hmm. We are not still where we are, marking time. 
Good, good. So we need a lot of reforms, a lot, right? And let's also mention this, that the, the, the CPI report says at page uh, four, mm. it says that corruption and impunity can spill over into violence by fueling social grievances. Corruption and impunity can spill over into violence by fueling social grievances. You remember when the president was in the opposition, he mentioned that there could be an Arab Spring right, here. Spring. Yes, and it's still the same. It's even worse now. So there could still be an Arab Spring in Ghana based on his own assessment. Because once people are getting dissolution, they see that you have come into office, you are bathing in the sky, your family has become rich, your ministers are in gas, gasoline, V8, and all those things. People will get aggrieved because they have classmates who are still walking on the roads without even bicycles. So the president should take this. This bathing in the sky, is it, is it an, um, um, a figure of speech? Oh. Because the, the defense minister denied that he wasn't bathing in the sky. Uh, he said Why the president can't it? even take a shower in there. And the thing is a luxurious one, the, the jet, right? That private jet. It's a luxurious one with all those facilities. Okay. Okay. We're talking about solutions. Yeah, so page four of the report is reminding the president that the Arab Spring that he said could happen in Ghana, the factors are still rife for an Arab Spring in Ghana. West now. Yes, West, actually. Thank you, Suini. The president must remember his Arab Spring warning is still relevant today because it's worse. Because like we've shown, corruption in 2014, we had, is it 48%? 48%. Yes, 48. And the worst in 2016 was 43. And he is coming, his best is 43. So it tells you that he's not the man to fight corruption. And that's why we always come back to the thing that one of the solutions to this corruption problem is that the president has to go. He and Baumia and all the this and, his uh, this, uh, 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 this uh, economic management team, they should go. Oh, yes. I thought you were going to talk about your that's article. A, yes, that's a solution. One of the is the easier solution because the man who is to fight corruption has been defeated by corruption. So we are we she should go immediately because the article we are coming to that's article two eight six clause four. He won't do anything about it. He's not interested. Not when now he's become very rich. He and his family are enjoying. So two eight, two eight six clause four says that any property or assets acquired by a public officer after the initial declaration required by clause one of this article, and which is not reasonably attributable to income, gift, loan, inheritance, or any other reasonable source, shall be deemed to have been acquired in contravention of this constitution. 2A6 clause 4. That is the unexplained wealth provision. Right. Sam, and it's your, your baby. You even started talking about it before I jumped on. So maybe I've just come to help you in this fight. So we are saying that let's operationalize this clause. And the reason I came to join you on this fight is when I read our history and saw that the Jage Commission, mm. what they did was that they hold most of Carmen Krumen's appointees. All of them. You see, long, I have the documents there in the office. Each one by one, come and declare everything that you got in office and explain how you got it. And then our people, Ghanaians, would often go and leave evidence in the night at the doorstep of the Jage Commission offices. So that's how come I joined. It's your fight. You started this. And I'm saying that, so let's operationalize this article by amending the constitution. Or, or we don't even need to amend the constitution. Just pass an act of parliament, automatic. Every minister, and then apart from the minister, a certain grade of senior chief directors and directors, when you leave office, automatically you go before Shiraj to get an account for your wealth. You actually don't need a new act. You can amend the Shiraj Act or even the OSP Act. Thank you. There. Very good. So Once you have acquired some wealth, that's it. we need you to explain how that's you got so it. Sound. If if your salary cannot afford it, mm -hmm. we take it back. Thank you. Uh, if you can't afford that, it was a. If you can't explain that it was a loan. Thank you. If you can't explain that it was a gift. Thank you. If you can't explain that it was an inheritance. Thank you. We take it. Unexplained wealth. That's you got it. it through a wrong process. Just like I heard. We don't have to catch you stealing money. Thank you very much. And that's it. And the Jagi Commission shows that that is our history. And even apart from that, there's this popular uh, uh, this public prosecutor, lawyer Pia. Mm -hmm. He too, that's how he was caught. This. Kous, Mutus, and Jabba, the Jabba case. Uh, he was prosecuting them, then he was saying to have received money in his accounts in London. People came and put the evidence in front of the door of the uh, Akwete uh, uh, Commission and all that. That's how Lawyer Apia was prosecuted. He prosecuting corruption, got prosecuted for corruption. So Sam, I've joined your fight. 
let's do an amendment. We don't need a constitutional uh, this, uh, review, though we all know that right now the constitution needs to be reviewed, but that's after the election, blah, blah, blah. Immediately, this goes to public officers. How about the, those who are not public officers? Our family and friends mm -hmm. who we can see yes. the evidence of their change in status and wealth. They are not in government. How will you hold them? Thank you. Let's rope them in. Let's rope them in. After all, the Baba Kamara case, the uh, Baba Kamara that, uh, yeah. The yeah. case, the Supreme Court said, yeah. yes, private persons are involved, uh, can also be investigated by Shride. Mm. Private persons maybe can and Johnson. be. Maybe in Johnson case. Yeah, the Supreme Court said even private persons. So in this new act, so Mr. President, whilst you're on your way out, we're asking you to resign. But in the meantime, please, let's quickly pass an act of parliament that will make it automatic. Every appointee, chief director, director, minister, deputy minister, presidency, all the presidential staff, you are leaving office, you appear before Shrine. Let, let, let's hear. And let, then, uh, uh -huh, so uh, two more. Apart from that also, that we are asking, he should act with this part. Quick, 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 quick. When you see a simple case, don't say due process, then for almost seven months. It's even one year. You remember Suleiman Alas and Dr. Anamdoya, he petitioned in January last year. One year on, people are still in office. No, we can't do this kukwasa, kukwasa. Sam, give me 30 seconds. Eh? Let me eh, mm. mention some of the notable things that Kufuado has said, which today he has not lived up to and he thinks we've forgotten. He needs a quick reminder that this thing has to stop. One, I shall protect the public purse. I see he's been defeated. Two, I'm too old to steal your money. I have my money already. Well, now he's become very rich as a result of coming to office. Three, yet is he castle, and so I come the end. Four, try me and see. Five, I'm not corrupt and will never be corrupt. Now lie. Six, <laughs> I can develop Ghana without borrowing money from anywhere. The money is here. Seven, I will transform Ghana in 18 months. Eight, I will not operate a family and friends government. Now lie. Nine, I will fight corruption with the Anas principle. Is that true? Ten, I will make the Kole Lagoon and Odor River a tourist site. Eleven, I will build a factory in every district. Twelve, I will give each constituency one million every year. Thirteen, I will arrest the dollar. The dollar has arrested him, eh? <laughs> Fourteen, the hikes in fuel prices will be a thing of the past, you know? Sixteen, I will make Accra the cleanest city in Africa. 16, uh, I will build 111 hospitals, 17, 350 uh, this, uh, secondary schools, and then 18, the Almighty will never go to the IMF for a bailout. Uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> 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 yes, uh, Linda, what, 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 what from where you sit, and as someone who is in this field, very experienced, you sit on the board of Transparency International. What is it that we are not doing right that we should be doing so that we don't get to keep this bad position as our best for four years and more? So I'm saying, um, um, I always say that if you're on a program with Martin, if you, if you are not careful after the program, you'll be in trouble. <laughs> 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 mm. Uh, okay, so some, the solutions are not different. We can't actually reinvent any wheel to come and address the problem of corruption. They are what we have actually outlined in our statement. And when Martin was talking about the unexplained wealth and all that, you see, we can actually either amend or either pass a new legislation. The value will be the same if enforcement is weak. And if there is no commitment towards enforcement, and let me give you an example. So you have the SP um, trying the case, the NDA matter, and the person is still at post. So who has the responsibility? So then if we don't see government commitment in helping the institutions mandated by law to do their work, then we are not going anywhere. The, the swiftness with which the PPA matter was dealt with. Some people are still at post. Mm. If government goes on to say that the La Bianca case that came up, as a result of that, the benchmark value, whatever, has been addressed, then, then we can see some efforts towards helping the SP for instance in doing their work. But the commitment is very, very low. And yeah, when you yeah, talk yeah, about... Be, be, Belinda, sorry, but this matter of the... La Bianca investigations leading to reforms in the GRA. That has happened. Yes, so, so now, now you don't have the benchmark regime anymore, which became a, 
a tool for corruption. It's, it doesn't exist anymore. And government well, is raking in more money than it used to. So, Samson, that one is good. So, by the reforms, we are going to get more money. But then if I'm trying somebody else, and the person is still at post, who has the power to remove the person from post for the, the trial to go on? It doesn't speak well. So you're talking about this grandstanding after we have actually mentioned a number of ministries in the COVID-19 report and how their ministers have, uh, the ministries have squandered money, risk allowances and all that. And the persons are still at post. And you have not had any action from government. Then you are like, why are we bothering us as far as the fight is concerned? We have actually people, the, 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 the COVID-19 procurement that we, we paid monies and never saw the... The, what we wanted. And the that's the last post. These are the things that we don't understand. I, I think this week or last week, I had to talk about another president where he was able to take action after the same COVID-19 um, expenditure report has been conducted. Why don't we have the same story here, especially for a government that promises anti-corruption is the way to go? Mm. So for me, we are not showing much commitment. So we are talking about, for instance, in our statement, talk about the public officers, uh, conduct of public officers bill. Mm -hmm. And we have still not passed that legislation into law. It is still, it has gone to parliament and come back from parliament, it's not still with the executive. My brother, that one can do with asset declaration issues, can do with conflict of interest issues, and they are the biggest issues we have. We are talking about this on the explained with them going before strike when you are leaving office. Asset declaration law is weak. It's, it's and Ankuma, it's Ankuma and Occupy Ghana have been writing almost every week. Mm -hmm reminding the president of the need for things like that. Uh, an asset declaration regime, which is efficient. You don't only declare, but the declaration is verified. The, the MPs, why can't you pass a small law that it's declared, don't put it in an envelope, go and put it there, nobody can open it. We want to verify it, and there should be some publication also. Because of that, and then families being brought in, or wives and others being brought in. Because of that, this thing has been sitting in Parliament for <laughs> upwards of uh, 10 years. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, Linda, you finish your point. I'll come to, I'll come to him because uh, Ajiman, Ajiman uh, Dia actually took the MPs on as well. Yes, so then if you talk about, uh, so that aside, talk about still the usage of the Auditor General's powers of the Salawas and surcharge. Hmm. And uh, when you go and make reference to Dom Levo, then you say they are an advocate for, I am not. I am saying that somebody has done it before. Why are you not doing it? The government so actually much. praised him for saving us a lot of money. Oh, please. Hmm. You, it's not too much to ask. Some of you say, you know, when, when you talk about power corrupt and absolute power corrupt, absolutely. The powers that people have, we need those powers to do the things that we are asking for. We don't have such powers. So if, like, can you imagine if we have it? Who would have done it? We are, not, we are not just speaking. We are actually thinking that corruption is the main cause of our problems, the economic woes that we are currently facing. Mm. I don't have any hair to be cut. But mm. those who say are being cut, corruption is a part of it. Mm. So we should actually all get interested in how we resolve the issue. And as I said, there is no new solution under the sun. The same thing we are talking about, parliament, and uh, after they have actually, the, the park has uh, actually sat in the, uh, on television, we've seen all these things being discussed. The recommendations are not being implemented. Mm. So for me, Parliament cannot just finish and not even refer the matters to the, uh, the uh, Attorney General for resolution. Please, we need to work as a, as a people. And we have people put in places that they have capacity, resources to do the same. We don't have. We can only shout and talk about these things. But then they also have the powers to act. Should act. Okay. Talk about the, about the Auditor General. Okay, the, I said that's what, And the SP's office. Any day, any time, the act has been designed. They are not being resolved now. They are not being paid now. But we know they have gotten to some sort of agreement with states. So thank you, states, for actually helping them to get to that. We are waiting to see when the money will start being rolled out. But whatever it is, they need an establishment fund. Nobody mm. should say that SP's office is making too much demands. They are, they are, they are not as old as the shrug. We are not making excuses. From the little that they have, they have gotten, they have shown you that they can actually do the work. So give them the establishment fund. A building alone does not fight corruption. Okay. Resources government gives to other organizations. I think Martin said it. We are mm. not seeing the impact. Mm. Okay. Give the SP the fund to right. do the work that he needs. Yes, uh, let, me, let me go to Kofi Bentel now. And Kofi, you see, uh, around the table, I can tell people's you know, anger. And it's not different when you go down there. 
But Martin Pebble will get up, Kofi Bento will get up and say, we are paying people to work. They are not working. Let's hit the streets and force them to do the work. And you see only a handful of Ghanaians show up. Well, Samson, so we have a problem. I mean, um, the kind of politicians we have or get is a reflection of the kind of people we are. Mm -hmm. And I know that also because sometimes when you take some steps and you want to do some things, you'll be surprised the people who come to you and try to tell you to tone down or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But I, I haven't given up hope. Listen, so I keep saying this constitution is not a failure. It has not failed. It is just that our leaders have found ways around it to continue to do the evil that they were doing in the past. To that extent, therefore, if you give the person room and you expect that by the exercise of their good sense, they will do the right thing because they have the room to do it and they do not do it, we take off the room. Let me put it this way. Structure regulates performance or structure regulates um, uh, what people do. Okay? It kind of it's like how, the kind of structure you put a person in will determine their behavior in a certain sense. If you are going a uh, on the road and the road is a one-way road, that structure will make you go in a certain direction. And if you go back, the law will be against you. You are going to have problems. I do believe that we have certain things in our constitution which we need to strengthen. If we find that, our politicians will not be morally upright. So, for instance, this power of censure, all right, I pray that we continue to have a hung parliament, and I pray that in the constitutional amendment, we take out the requirement that ministers should come from parliament. What that would do is that once you enter parliament, you become a parliamentarian, you know there's no way out, that's where you're going to be, and that's where you make your name and whatever it is. Why? Because when we start with the constitutional amendment, one of the things that we should look at doing is strengthening the power of parliament to censure one, ministers, and also the president. The point is, there must be a way that makes whoever is in leadership, whether he's president or not, know that if you hit a certain point, we will bring you down. We don't have that now. We need to design something like that. We also have to know that until citizens continue to fight, we will not or we cannot expect that leaders by themselves will elect against their own comfort and do the right thing. My, job, my, job, my job is to pay tax so that it will be used to develop the country for me. Why should I pay the tax and now go and police the person and pay the tax to use it uh, well? Because the person that you, you, you have to police is not an angel. And you have tried that person and have tried different people for 30 years. And they have shown you that they will use every opportunity to do the wrong thing. Look, we, we did a whole procurement act. And there was one, only one clause in the procurement act that says that under very strict circumstances, we can do, you know, something. So sourcing. We elevate that small footnote to the whole procurement act. 90% of procurement is done that way. That is why you must police the people you put in office. The point I'm making is this. We are showing that we are not a people who can be trusted to be moral or upright in office, regardless of what we said when we were seeking the office. So let us build structures that will regulate behavior. And that is where the constitutional amendment, etc., come in. In the meantime, we need to keep fighting like you are fighting, like my team is fighting, like I am fighting, like all of us are fighting. Until we get that constitutional review done, we are not going to make that much progress. So... If you leave me alone, I'll say stop everything, let's go straight to constitutional review, and let's deal with amendments in the constitution which will make politicians and leaders afraid of people, not the other way around. Because mm. when we give them our resources, we can expect, based on their performance, that they will abuse, misuse it, turn around and tell us things that we don't want to hear. All right. Um, so let's hear from Sohini to what's, what are some of the solutions we can be talking about. And mm. parliament is supposed to be one of the solutions. Well, um, Samson, I am not against constitutional review. In fact, I am for constitutional review. But I get worried when we speak of it as if that is going to be all. That is going to be the solution to the problems that we face. Because the problem that we face is bigger than just text mm -hmm. on paper. 
it is also attitudinal. Mm -hmm. And that is reflected in what um, Kofi mm -hmm. said a while ago about the uh, procurement law. Because when you are making the law, you are deemed to be reasonable. And so you make a provision that in certain cases, um, because of emergency and others, you may resort to a procedure of procurement. But attitude of the people in office have led to it being the main thing now. And that tells you that no matter how well you craft the law, if the people you put in place or in charge of affairs are deemed to be corrupt, they will find ways to go around the law. I mean, you lawyers say that sometimes uh, you, the, the problem is when you break the law, but it is okay to bend it or to mm -hmm. push it to its limit. And so when you have the mindset, and I'm sorry to say this, of a people that is in default, corrupt, passing the right laws and, you know, writing the fine text alone is not enough. And that is why I said initially that I would have loved to have this discussion in three themes. Mm -hmm. Look, the general theme, the solution, in my view, to that is for us to perhaps reconstruct the understanding of our culture and our way of life. Uh, Linda, a while ago, used a proverb. Yedinam, mm -hmm. Perhaps the understanding at the time that it was uttered is different today. Today, it means bribery. And it is used to justify bribery as our way of life. You have people say everybody they chop for in work site. Mm. And it is a normal cliche that people believe in. I mean, you have proverbs Linda, like... Linda used it in the right context. I know. I agree. But I'm you saying... Need, you need to resource the OSP. That is the right context. You but I'm telling you when you go to the street, mm. this is the understanding on the street. Mm. So it is used to justify even when people bribe mm. to get their way mm. right. out. You, you have people, more. you have people, I'm going to even give you one more. <laughs> they say, I, 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 and, and, and we'll pay royalties to ABU for saying uh -huh. that you cannot be selling a permit mm -hmm. and your legs mm -hmm. will be dry. Mm -hmm. This uh, is... <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? Uh -huh. So I'm saying that we need, and, 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 and this is, and this is something, this is reflected in how since independence, we have changed governments either through the ballot or through the bullet for the same reason, but yet we are still battling with that same reason Even without if any solution. The, the front views are for in the wealthy. Fact, mm -hmm. in, we don't investigate where their wealth is in fact, from. In fact, we don't care. In fact, and I have always subscribed to a, 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 a saying that a people deserve the kind of government they get. Yeah. So, and we are like that. We are corrupt. Mm -hmm. the, the evidence, again, is in this, uh, what do you call it? The, 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 the fourth place. estate. A fourth estate, yes. You know, revelation. Mm -hmm. The school placement. A cleaner, you know, a cook. Mm -hmm. These are the people involved. Mm -hmm. Fathom a situation where the cleaner mm -hmm. is made uh, a CEO of a company mm -hmm. to award a contract of, say, $2 million. Right. You think he would take 20000 mm -hmm. Fathom a situation where the cook is made a DCE. Yeah. So it is not just the politician. It is not just the politics. Mm -hmm. It is the people. Yeah. So we need that, in my view, reconstruction yeah. of our attitude. Okay. That may take a longer time. Then when you come to the politics, you need to look at political party funding or poli funding yeah, of politicians in general. The commissioner of uh, inordinate judgment debt, mm -hmm. Justice mm -hmm. Yara Powell, yeah. focused on this as well. He mm -hmm. said funding, mm -hmm. if it's not resolved, mm -hmm. yeah. will continue to give us problems for our corruption. Yeah. Yeah. Because all the polit politicians want to build a war chest. Mm -hmm. And the CDD told us how much it costs to mm -hmm. be to run a successful presidential exactly. campaign. So something, and even the attitude campaign. problem has to start from our homes. Mm -hmm. It has to start from our mocks right. and our churches. Mm -hmm. It has to start from our workplaces. Mm -hmm. That is where it has to start from. Then you come to the political party funding. Mm -hmm. Not just even the parties, but politicians. I mean, we, have all, we all have people mm -hmm. who, as a result of the faulty attitude I speak of, are burdened with a lot of demands mm -hmm. 
-hmm. that many sympathizers help us to deal with. Yeah. And these sympathizers may also have an interest in government businesses. Right. And so when they do, and their interest clashes mm -hmm. with the right way of doing things, they expect the politician to pay up mm -hmm. by showing support and by showing solidarity. So when you have a clear you know, regulation right. on how parties are funded, mm -hmm. how politicians are funded, you are able to some extent deal with conflict of interest mm -hmm when it arises, because that is how people uh, 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 take advantage right. of the system okay. uh, to, to corrupt Thank it. you, thank you very much. And uh, finally, mm -hmm. we need specifically to ensure that we choose parties, especially led by people with the commitment to do right, knowing that they are not perfect, but with the right commitment to do right, you, we you. must support such people. Thank you very much. And news it will always start from the head.